So we're continuing our Valentine's Day theme here at Wayside. Last week, we learned about integrated performance assessments and some of the benefits of using them in our language classes. So today, we're going to take a closer look at the IPAs themselves and how to best implement those types of assessments in the classroom using our IPA planning template as a guide. We'll take a minute to introduce ourselves quickly. Hi, my name is Lexi and I live in Oregon. I was a Spanish teacher for 10 years and I just left the classroom in June and joined Wayside as an instructional strategist. And I'm really excited to be here this evening. I'm here with two of my fellow instructional strategists, Kate and Kelsey, and I will let them introduce themselves. Kate, do you wanna start off? Sure. Hello, everybody. My name is Kate. I'm from Massachusetts. I'm a former Spanish teacher and uh, have been instructional strategist with Wayside for a year. I'm going to be the behind the scenes person today, so I'll answer all your questions in the chat. And I don't have my camera on, but I am here. Thank you for being here. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kelsey. I am also a former Spanish teacher. I taught Spanish for about seven years, uh, primarily in private schools near Chicago. Um, and I also joined the instructional strategist team back in July. Today, I will be taking you through um, a think aloud essentially with an IPA planner. Um, and I'm really excited to be here with you all tonight. All right, thank you so much. We are happy to be here with you tonight for the second session of our three-part series, which is called Planning for Proficiency Integrated Performance Assessments. In tonight's 60 minute session, we're going to guide you through the IPA planning process using Entre Culturas and Entre Cultures as models. In just a moment, we will share with you our new and free IPA planning template tool that you can use to plan out your own IPAs. Kelsey will then demonstrate how to use the learning site and an IPA from Entre Culturas to create a solid plan for assessment for you and your students. Remember, we will have a third session in this series next week on February 24th, uh, same time as this session. And next week we will host some guest teachers who use IPA in their classrooms, and they will share some tips and tricks for getting started with IPAs, or if you're already using IPAs, refining your technique in your own classroom. There will also be a chance next week to share out and problem solve with other teachers. So be sure to register for that session. We can put the link in the chat for that. Oh, Kate is on it. Uh, so the link for the chat is in the chat for that. And also it's on our website as well. So we hope that you join us next week as well. Tonight we have a workbook that goes along with our session. And this is a great tool to help you follow along as we go through all the parts of the IPA and some ideas for implementing them in your classroom. You can download the workbook by using the QR code on the screen or that link. And Kate is also going to be putting some links in the chat for you. We have a link for the workbook only, and we will also have a folder with all of the resources for tonight. So Kate will put a couple of different links in the chat for you. When you open the workbook, and either through the URL or for the QR code, the next step is that you need to download the workbook. So if you look in the top right corner where that arrow is, that little symbol means to download. So once you've downloaded that PDF and opened it up, you'll be able to type in all of the boxes. So this is an editable PDF that you can type into. Uh, and this workbook will guide you through the different sections for our presentation tonight. All right, our agenda for this evening, I'm gonna do a quick review of the previous session on IPAs, talk a little bit about IPAs. We'll share that IPA planning template with you. And then Kelsey's gonna walk us through a little demo. And then at the end, we'll have uh, some time for questions. First, we're gonna take a moment to reflect and do a little roses and thorns activity. So if you were here last week, you can include what you learned in last week's session for your responses. But if you weren't here last week, that's fine. Just reflect on your own assessment experience as a teacher in general. So the first question, this is in your workbook. This is on page three. You can write in there. You could type in there. You can write on a little piece of paper. It's totally up to you how you want to engage with this. So your roses or that full heart up there, the question is, what do you already know about IPAs or about assessment and what works well for you? So those are gonna be our roses. And then our thorns, what areas are still a struggle for you in terms of assessment or IPA and, or what questions do you have about IPAs? 
So we've got our roses and our thorns or the, the full heart and the broken heart. Uh, you can write on a piece of paper, write in your PDF, but we're gonna give you three minutes of just quiet for you to reflect and write those answers out. So we'll start this little timer on the screen. Oh, I'll give you, yeah, I'll give you a second to download. Go ahead and open that workbook up. And this is on page three in that workbook. Okay, so we're on page three. And I think we're gonna start that timer. So three minutes, some time to reflect, think about assessment. What are your roses? What are your thorns? You have about two minutes left. So you're writing down, what are your assessment thoughts? The good, the bad. Yes, we are going to share in the chat eventually, but if you're ready to share in the chat now, you can definitely do that. Yeah. Right. We have about 20 seconds left. You can keep writing. If you want to start putting something in the chat, you're more than welcome to put something in the chat. All right. Thanks for your participation. So we would love to hear from you in the chat. If you want to share a rose, share a thorn, share your general thoughts, we would love to see that. We're seeing some great responses in here already. So Heidi says she's just getting started, but happy that she attended our session last week so that she could see that it's not as difficult as she thought. So that's great. We're glad to have you uh, here with us so you can see it in action today, Heidi. Um, Ginny, I feel your pain. I know that sometimes we, you know, have resources and sometimes we have to enhance them and change them, but we understand and hopefully maybe we can help you out tonight. Yeah, IPA is something we know. They involve all three modes and authentic tasks. Great. Um, sometimes they can be managing, challenging to manage and grade. Absolutely. And we'll address that a little bit today. Timing. Timing is always really hard when it comes to IPA planning. So we do understand that, but hopefully with uh, a planner, 
we can help you plan the whole thing out beforehand. So maybe saving you a little bit of planning time. How? Yes, that is a question we are going to address in great detail today. So don't worry, Jennifer, we got you. All right, thank you so much for those responses. They are great to read through. Keep them coming too. If you're still writing, please send those in. All right, we're gonna move on a little bit here. So last week we established that we love IPAs. So let's remember why we love those IPAs. Last week we presented the what and the why behind IPAs. In our language education world, what is an IPA? An IPA is a classroom-based performance assessment used for evaluating students' communication skills in all three modes of communication. So that's interpretive, interpersonal, and presentational. Last week, we also looked at four reasons why we love IPAs. First of all, IPAs reflect authentic language use. They engage students in tasks like making lists, exchanging messages, and other real-life tasks. Performance assessments require learners to demonstrate their language skills in some ways that connect to a real world context. Secondly, IPA al IPAs allow learners to communicate using the language. Instead of focusing on isolated vocabulary or skills, we're really inviting students to showcase what they know and can do in the language in all three modes of communication. Thirdly, because these IPAs have context and often rely on an authentic resource, they're interesting for students and encourage students to take risks in the language while they're interacting with those IPAs. And lastly, IPAs are student-centered. Not only does the format of the assessment allow them freedom in expressing themselves in the language, they enable learners to monitor their own progress. By using rubrics to evaluate and provide feedback for student work, students have a better understanding of their own proficiency level, and they can also see how to improve to the next level. IPAs rely on assessing all three modes of communication. The first task is typically in the interpretive mode. Students listen, view, read, or somehow interact with an authentic text. Then the teacher provides some comprehension checks and give feedback. Students will build the other two tasks off of the interpretive task. So next, students will either move on to the interpersonal or the presentational task. These two tasks will relate back to the information that was learned from that interpretive task previously. For interpersonal, students will need to have some type of exchange with another person. So this might be a conversation, an email, or a text message exchange. For the presentational task, students will present information to an audience, but there's no exchange with the audience. This could be, this would be one-way communication. So this could be a written or speaking task like a blog entry, students could give a short speech or present a PowerPoint, for example. Today, we are going to look at IPAs in the context of a unit of Entre Culturas. Remember that for Entre Culturas and Entre Cultures, there are performance assessments available for formative and summative assessments. So for Entre Culturas, our formatives are called En Camino and our summatives are called Vive Entre Culturas. For Entre Cultures, the formative are called J'avance and the summatives are called J'y Arrive. Uh, we will, in, in the workbook and also a little bit later on, we'll show you what the different types of assessments are called in other um, texts as well. Today, we are sharing our brand new planning template to IPA planning template tool with you. This document is editable, so you can type right into it. This document includes spaces to plan out all of the elements and the logistics of an IPA. So you, there's a Google Doc copy, and there's also a Word copy of this document. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to open the link. Kate put them in the chat earlier, but she'll put them in there again. So you can either use the QR code or the link on the screen or the link in the chat, and you will need to make a copy. So once you open it, just go to file and then make a copy and it will make a copy for you that you can type directly into and edit. There's also directions in that folder as well as how to, of how to make your copy. So as we move through this demo today, we will be focusing on an IPA out of Entre Culturas, like I said a couple minutes ago. And as a quick reminder, if you are not yet using Wayside Publishing resources, you can always create your own IPA. 
I have definitely made a few IPAs in my day. And even though it takes some time, it's worth it. One of the reasons that I was grateful that I started using Entre Culturas a few years ago is that the IPAs and the rubrics are all done for me. If you do need to make your own IPA, there are a few tips for you in page five of the workbook. The first step after deciding your goal and your essential questions would be to choose an authentic resource to use as your interpretive task and then work from there. But for now, we're going to look at this IPA from the lens of the Wayside products because it's all done for us already. Now that we have proposed some ideas to help you better implement IPAs in your classroom, we hope you will engage with this assessment tool. Kelsey is now going to lead you through her demo. Kelsey, take it away. All right, thanks Lexi. Um, so like we've mentioned, there are a few options for how you can participate and engage during tonight's demo. I'm going to use a unit from Entre Culturas level one to fill out my unit planner. So you could open the template using the links that were provided in the chat and on the previous slides and follow along with the unit that I am using, which will be Entre Culturas Uno, unit five. Or you could pull up an IPA that you plan to use for your next unit and follow along with my steps while inputting your own specific IPA information. Or you may choose just to watch how I'm filling out my planner and listening to my think aloud as I walk through my process and take notes in your workbook or on a piece of paper as you go. Regardless of how you choose to engage, I invite you to ask questions in the chat and Kate will answer them or pass them along to us. Now, as we go through this demonstration, I am going to go a little quickly. So remember that this is being recorded. So you can watch this session again once it's been posted to our website. And if you're wondering about how much time it would take to complete an IPA planner, I would recommend spending about an hour-ish to plan to complete your first IPA planner. And I say your first IPA planner because once you get used to planning in this way, it goes much faster the more you do it. So we are going to start by setting the scene for this unit. Now, if you attended our January series, Planning for Proficiency, you may remember that identifying unit goals is the very first step of the backward design process, followed by determining assessment evidence. So because of this, we are going to start our IPA planner by filling in what those unit goals and essential questions are, and then we will continue to determine our assessment evidence by filling out the rest of the sections. So like I said, I'm going to be using Entre Culturas Uno, Unidad Cinco, for this IPA planner. The reason being that if I were in the classroom teaching in Illinois, this would be about where I'm at in my school year and, and in my curriculum. Again, you can choose to look at a different unit that best applies to you. So the very first thing that I need to do in my unit planner is enter my title, which is Entre Culturas Uno, Unidad Cinco. Now I need to get my unit goals and essential questions. So I'm going to jump into the learning site for this, and I'm going to navigate to the flex text to help me in planning. Now I prefer the teacher's edition for planning purposes, now, I'm going to show you a couple of different locations where you can find the unit goals and essential questions. The first being in the introduction to the flex text in the front matter within the table of contents. So what I really like about the table of contents is that it provides a quick overview of each unit just in a very condensed format. And so I'm just scrolling until I get to unit five right now. Here we can see unit five, and in the sidebar, I can very easily see my unit goals. And then underneath them, I have my essential questions. Now, what I really like about the table of contents is that it provides a quick glimpse of the tasks that make up the summative assessment. If you're using Entre Culturas one through three, these will be called, the section is called Vive Entre Culturas. In level four, it's called Evaluación Integrada. In Entre Culture, this is called Giajiv, and in uh, Triangulo Apreciado, this is En Resumen, El IPA. What I like is that it provides me a quick glimpse of the tasks, so I can really easily see that there's an interpretive reading, an interpersonal writing, and a presentational speaking assessment. But for the purposes of this IPA planner, I think I want something a little bit more specific, so I'm also going to look at my unit opener. So here I can find the 
unit goals again on this unit opener spread. And as I scroll, I can also see my essential questions. Now, unfortunately, I can't copy and paste directly from the flex text, which is really, really frustrating because I don't want to have to retype all of this information. So let me show you how you can copy and paste this information. So I'm going to leave the flex text behind and I am going to navigate into the content tab. And here I have access to all of the different units and all of the resources associated with the unit. So I'm going to go into my unit folder for unit five. And right here at the top is a list of all of those unit goals, which I can copy and paste. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it directly into my unit planner. Now for my essential questions, I'm gonna go back to the learning site and into that content tab. And there's an essential questions forum that I can click on. And again, here is text that I can copy of all of those essential questions. So I'm going to copy that information and paste it into my unit planner, fix some formatting real quick. And so now I have a quick overview of those unit goals and essential questions that I can always refer back to as I continue to plan for my, for my IPA planner. So now that I have that information, I need to focus on my IPA itself. So I'm going to leave the content folder behind for now and go back into my flex text. Remember that the flex text remembers which page you were last on so I can easily jump right back into the unit opener. And if I scroll to the bottom of my unit opener, I can find a brief general description of the IPA for this unit. This is really great to share with students at the start of a unit to get them thinking about what they will need to do to demonstrate their proficiency towards those unit goals and essential questions. But for my IPA planner, I really want more specific information about the tasks and more specific information about the materials associated with those tasks. So I'm going to jump into the textbook spread for this assessment, which is called Vive and Cultura's. I'm gonna to apologize for that red bar that keeps appearing. I was having some issues with my flex text earlier this week. Um, okay, so right here at the top of this spread, I can see a more detailed description of the context for my IPA. So already I have that um, detailed description or more detailed description. And as I scroll, I can see an overview for all three of my tasks. Now, just like before, I still can't copy from the flex text. So to um, show you why I like to plan from the flex text is because of this green compass icon. So if I click on that green compass icon, it actually serves as a link between the online resources and the flex text itself. And when I click on the icon, I can see a document here called Vive Entre Culturas, Vamos a Visitar Santo Domingo. And what this document is, is a PDF version of all of the tasks for this IPA. So here I can see my interpretive task, which I'm scrolling through now, my interpersonal and my presentational tasks. And since it's a PDF, I can easily highlight the text that I'm looking for. So in this case, the overview of the IPA, and I can copy it and paste it directly into my IPA planner. And since that document, that PDF, had all of the specific information for that IPA, I'm actually gonna copy that link and hyperlink it into my IPA planner. That way I have all of this information in one easily condensed document. So I'm just gonna hyperlink that and then I'm gonna go back into my flex text because there was a second resource here, which is the rubric for this IPA. So here I can see the rubric that I will use to assess and evaluate my students. And again, I want to keep this information handy. So I'm going to copy the link to it at the top and hyperlink it into my um, IPA planner. So now I have all of the information needed for my overview of my IPA. And now it's time to move into step two of my IPA planning process. And this is where I dive into the nitty gritty, all of those finer details of the IPA and the tasks itself. So 
I'm going to start with the very first task for this assessment, which is the interpretive task. And the first thing that I'm going to do is navigate into my flex text and read the prompts to identify what exactly this task is made up of. So here I can see the outline in the first task, what I'm doing in the second task, students are going to read a mask a map to discover where Carnival is celebrated in the Dominican Republic. And then in the third, it's also going to, students will be reading an article and answering questions about it. So I've got that information in the back of my mind. Something else that I want to check while I'm looking at the flex text are the materials that are associated with this assessment. So to do that, this is where that green compass icon really comes into play because it can show me what materials are directly associated with each step and each task within my IPA. So here we already saw that the IPA planning, uh, the IPA assessment PDF is related to the first step. So let's check the second step. Sure enough, still the document. And the third step, again, is still that PDF document. So I'm going to just double check that PDF document to make sure there was nothing that I missed in it. More specific information about step one is here. Here I can see the information for step two and I can see that students can type on it because of that grayed out box that indicates that students can type. The article is embedded directly into this document and the follow-up questions are also here. Students can type in it because those boxes are grayed out. So I'm gonna add all of that information that I've learned about that interpretive task into my planning document, fix the formatting really quick. I also noted the page number just to be on the safe side to make sure I've got all the information I could possibly need here. Moving on to the next task, which is the interpersonal task. I'm going to go into my flex text and read the description of this task in the flex text. So I can see that students are going to be um, participating in a text message conversation with Paula, who is a video blogger from this unit. And I just wanna check that the material is associated with that assessment document. So I'm gonna scroll down to that. Here I can see there's, okay, a little bit more specific information about what this prompt is. And then again, I can see that this is a completely typable PDF. So my students can type directly on it and submit their answers there. So I'm gonna add that information to my um, IPA planner as well. So students will participate in a direct messaging thread with Paula and they'll use the assessment PDF. And now on to the presentational task. Again, I'm going to refer to the flex text first and read the description here. And then I'm going to check that green compass icon to see if there are any other materials associated. And sure enough, there is a task associated with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that link and it will open up the task for me. I'm going to attempt it so I can see what it'll look like for my students. And here I can see that this is an audio or video recording. So that's good information to know and keep track of. And I remembered seeing something in that assessment PDF about the presentational task. So I'm just gonna double check that information as well. And sure enough, here's a space for students to be able to brainstorm and outline their presentational task. So I'm just gonna summarize really quickly that students will create a slideshow or video for Paula explaining what they're going to do while they're in the Dominican Republic and know what materials are associated with it. Okay, so now that I've identified what exactly the task is, now I need to dive a little bit deeper into that task by identifying the essential content from the unit. So this could be vocabulary and structures and any background information, cultural information that students need to know in order to be successful on the IPA. Why is it important to identify this information? Well, we know backward design is all about planning with the end in mind. And we've established that the unit goals and we've already established what our unit goals and essential questions are. So now we are in the process of determining the assessment evidence 
that we will use to ensure students meet those unit goals and can answer the essential questions. So that means we have to consider and think about what content is essential for them to be successful on the assessment, therefore demonstrating they can meet those goals that we identified at the start of our backward design process. Now, to identify this information, I typically complete the task myself. So I go through the IPA and I will do the entire IPA, which I know sounds very time consuming, but it really does help me to better understand what my students will do for each task, especially because I was not an author of any of these books. So I really want to get a feel for what my students will encounter and what the authors were envisioning. So as I work, I like to cross-reference the structures and words with the um, synthesis that's located within each unit, just so I always have that material up. So within the flex text, you should be able to find the section called Synthesis de Grammatica y de Vocabulario. Depending on which text you're using, you might see a separate synthesis for grammar and vocabulary. But regardless, there is one for each unit of Entre Culturas, Entre Cultura, and Triangulo Apreciado. So like I said, I like to split my screen while working on this part of the planner. So I'll have my assessment piece up uh, in one tab and my synthesis up on the other. I'm not going to do that tonight because it might make it hard for you to follow along with me. If you don't know how to split your screen, a quick Google search can help you out. Or if you prefer that uh, more low tech option and you have a physical edition of your textbook, you could print the assessment pieces out like that PDF and use the print edition side by side. Or you could use the assessment tasks up on your screen and use the print edition of your textbook for the synthesis section. Really, it doesn't matter whatever works best for you, as long as you have access to both or you have a way to cross-reference your information. So now I'm going to dive into looking at that interpretive task. And I'm going to use the PDF for this because the PDF includes all of the essential material and information. So I'm going through and I'm reading the captions here. So I'm picking out which terms appear uh, and stick out to me like El Desfile, Esfilan Carnaval. And then in the second step, I'm taking note of any key cities or key information that are sticking out to me, I'm taking note of these cities. And then in the article, I'm actually noticing now as I'm looking at it that there are bolded words in this article that come directly from the um, vocabulary sections within this unit. So terms like carnaval, fiesta, mascaras, et cetera, those all came directly from the unit. So I'm taking note of that. And then I'm going to add them into my IPA planner. So let me type those in real quick and fix some formatting. And so one other thing that I noticed while reading through the interpretive task and the description is that the article and these tasks are all related to Carnival celebrations. And I really want to make sure that my students have a basic understanding of what Carnival is before beginning the assessment. I think that's important prior information for them. So in Entre Culturas Uno, there's a section called Esplora, which focuses on interculturality. So I'm going to navigate to this section and see if I can find any relevant information or activities um, about Carnival. And sure enough, right here, we see an activity that specifically addresses celebrations in La Vega, as well as celebrations in the Dominican Republic and in New York. So very quickly, I just want to check out and see what these activities are like so I can take note of where they are in the text. So here is Actividad 39 all about kind of all celebrations in the Dominican Republic. So I'm just quickly scrolling through this to see what else is part of this section. Here I found that Enfoque Cultural section, which focuses specifically on La Vega and celebrations in La Vega. And here are descriptions of Carnival for celebrations in New York. And so I'm just going to take note of those three activities and add them into my essential content. So now I've finished my first task and now it's time to dive into that interpersonal task. So again, I'm going to open up the PDF task for this assessment. 
I've already completed it myself. And as I was completing it, I did use the synthesis of grammar and vocabulary to help me to make sure I was aligned with what my students might produce. And there were really three things that stuck out to me about this task. Number one, it is a text message exchange. Number two, it's a task about making plans with someone. And number three, Paula specifically asked me about music from the Dominican Republic. So there is my essential content. Let's start by looking at number one. This is a text message thread. So I'm curious to see if I can find any information about texting with someone in Spanish. So I'm gonna check out that Esplora section again. Don't see anything in that section. Not seeing anything here. But what I did see was information about music. And we know that Paula asked me about music in the Dominican Republic. So I'm going to go check out um, that section and see what that activity is all about, see if it's of any note or any use for my students. And sure enough, activity 41 uh, is all about bachata. And there even is a little section in here that talks about three different uh, bachateros. And one of them is from the Dominican Republic themselves. So this would be really good information to share with my students and make sure they have some understanding of before getting to our summative assessment. So I'm going to add that information into my essential content for this task. And now going back to the task itself, it is all about making plans. So I'm gonna focus on the grammar and vocabulary synthesis to see if there's any grammar concepts or vocabulary sections that talk specifically about making plans. I'm not seeing anything that especially stuck out to me um, in the grammar section. So let's look at the vocabulary. Sure enough, there's a section that's talking about leisure activities. That would be really useful for my students. Accepting and rejecting invitations to an event would also be really useful for my students. So I'm going to take that information and I'm going to add that into my IPA planner. And I'm still kind of hung up on this texting in Spanish idea. I want to make sure I haven't missed something. So I am actually going to leave the flex text behind and I'm going to search in my content tab to see if there's anything that I possibly missed. So I'm going to search by unit. So I'm switching into unit five. And I think there might be some prior information maybe in a section that specifically addresses cultural information. So I'm going to search for an Enfoque Cultural section, which are sections in our series that present some cultural information to students. And sure enough, when I search for this, the very first thing that comes up is an extension activity for como chatear en español. So this is an extension activity. So it's an add-on to a prior activity. So I want to find the original activity. And here it is, como chatear en español. And here are a whole bunch of information about how teenagers and people in the Spanish-speaking world might use abbreviations in a text messaging thread. So that might be some culturally relevant information for students. And so now let's talk about the presentational task. So checking out the prompt for this again, let me flip into, the, into my uh, planning document or my PDF, sorry. Scrolling down into my presentational assessment, there was one phrase in this that really stuck out at me. And that is to design an itinerary with places that you are going to visit and activities you are going to do in each place. So let's check out that synthesis again and see if there's anything that could relate to this task. And sure enough, when I jump into my flex text, the very first thing that I notice in the grammar synthesis is the listing and the information about using ear plus a plus infinitive to express the future simple. Okay, so I am going to add this into my IPA planner. And I'm just gonna check those vocabulary sections again. 
So I'm going to scroll into the vocabulary sections. Again, talking about leisure activities, that's really helpful information. I think students will use this information when they complete their assessments. And as I continue to scroll, accepting and rejecting invitations, not so much for this task. I'm gonna keep scrolling. And let's see what else can help me out. Talking about different events and festivities that students like to attend, I think that will be really helpful for them in this task as well. So I'm gonna take note of the SCCDSA sections one and three and take note of that in my essential content for my presentational task. Now, you may have noticed that there were sections, particularly in the synthesis um, related to vocabulary that I completely left out. Like this expresiones utiles section, like this one here, and even this además se dice section that I'm coming up on. And the reason that I left them off of the essential content is because these are non-essential vocabulary sections. They provide great opportunities to challenge students and differentiate and provide opportunities to um, level up and increase proficiency, but they ultimately are not essential for students' summative assessment. They can be successful on the summative assessment without them, which is why I left them off. Whew, okay. Okay, we're gonna take a little brain break here, show dem demo some self-care. <laughs> so take a second, take a... Oh, Lexi, you muted yourself. I don't know how that happened. Okay, uh, yeah, so take a moment, take a deep breath, relax your jaw, um, put your shoulders down. I would get my shoulders around my ears, right? So keep your shoulders down. And then we're gonna do a little check-in here. So we'll go to the next slide. Uh, one of my favorite check-ins in the chat, on the scale of dog gifts, how are you feeling right now? Not necessarily about IPAs, it could be about life in general. So in the chat, throw a number in there. How are you feeling right at this moment if a dog gift were to describe your feelings? Sorry, Lexi, I muted you by accident. Oh, that's okay. I was trying to spotlight you. All right, we got five. Oh, we got all sorts of numbers, lots of sevens. <laughs> oh, no. oh, three, Erin. That's like kind of how I feel after a long day. Three and seven. <laughs> Remember, if you missed anything today or if we're going really fast, this recording will be available tomorrow. So don't stress it. Channel more of your number one than your number four right now, maybe. <laughs> Number two, so we can be excited to use yes. IPAs and yeah. be really pumped about it. Yeah, Deborah, that's the spirit. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for participating. Okay, so we're gonna dive back in, okay? And now we're getting into a little bit more of the trickier information and things to consider. How will I administer each of these tasks? And really, this is going to depend heavily on your school schedule and your school specific resources. How many classes are you going to plan to use for your IPA? Do students have their own devices that they can complete tasks on? Is there a school or a departmental policy against taking assessments home or doing assessments at home? Do your students have access to stable internet connection, et cetera? Now, I really can only speak for my own experiences. So as I go through the next few steps, think about your specific situation and adapt what I'm saying as needed to meet your needs. Typically, I plan for about two classes, maybe a class and a half for an IPA. For some students, it might be their very first time that they've done an assessment this way, so they may feel unsure or uncertain for how it will go. And so if that's the case, I might take three whole days to administer it, explaining how the tasks are interconnected as I go, ensuring that students do all parts while they are in my class. Now, since this is unit five, my students are probably pretty comfortable with this type of assessment at this point in the year. And I feel confident that they can complete some of the tasks outside of class because of our resources. So I'm going to spread this IPA out over two days. So on day one, I will discuss the context and essential questions and rubric with my students. And then we'll look at the interpretive task. 
So I plan to use the first two steps of the interpretive task as a warm up and project the assessment PDF to students. Now, personally, I prefer for students to read on a physical piece of paper. So I'm going to print out the article and questions for students to read, and then they can compare their answers after reading um, with their classmates. On day two, students will complete the interpersonal task. I'll assign the assessment PDF to students on the learning site and direct them to page six. Here, students can complete the prompts with their responses, and then they'll download the document with their changes and upload to our learning management system. Then students can use the rest of class to start outlining and drafting their presentation during uh, using that last page of the assessment PDF. And then for homework, I would have students finish their presentation and reporting and submit it to the learning site for the next class. So that's kind of how I would go about approaching my administering of this specific IPA. So thinking about the feedback and evaluation component of the IPA. Again, this will be, uh, this will vary by your needs and your school's policies. So what I choose to do for my IPA planner might not apply to you. IPAs are an amazing assessment tool, but they can get a little overwhelming, particularly in terms of providing feedback and grading. So I just wanna take a minute and give you permission not to grade everything. These tasks are all interconnected. So the information that your students learn or some of the output that they produce might be recycled throughout the assessment. You might find that providing some quick feedback on two of the three tasks and only providing a numeric grade for one task is sufficient for you and your students. But depending on your situation, you may need to grade two tasks or even all three. Regardless of what you choose to do, I know you're gonna make the best decision based on your needs, your students' needs, and your school's needs. So getting back to my IPA planner, I've chosen not to grade the interpretive assessment because for this assessment, students will use the information that they learn about Carnival in the other two tasks and students can get feedback by interacting with their peers. Now I will grade both the interpersonal and presentational task using that IPA rubric that I'm copying over from earlier. Now I'm just gonna put that into the graded section here. And as for feedback, this is going to vary for each task. For the interpersonal task, I'm going to focus on providing proficiency-driven feedback, which focuses on strategies and suggestions for how students can improve. And then for the summative task, I am a huge fan of providing students the opportunity to decide what type of feedback they receive and how they receive it. So since students are completing this task on the learning site, I will use the tools on the learning site to provide either corrective or proficiency feedback, or both depending on my student's preference, using written, audio, or video comments, again, according to my student's preferences. I know that sounds like a lot of work, but honestly, that is something that saved me so much time because I found that I was no longer spending hours providing really in-depth corrective feedback to students that wouldn't even look at it. My students actually valued my feedback more because I was focusing on um, feedback types and feedback types and formats that really, you know, were specific to them and really helped them out. So now that I know what tasks I'm going to grade and how I will provide feedback, it's time to determine how I'm going to assign a numeric grade. Honestly, I would prefer to just provide rubric feedback to my students, but the reality is that's not reality. Most schools and most teachers have to assign a numeric grade. So if you are using Wayside Publishing's resources, there is a really helpful document that I want to show you to help you figure out the best way for you to convert rubric scores to grades. So I'm going to go back into my learning site and in the content tab under the resources folder in the just for teachers, you will find this document, which is called Assessment Guidelines. When you open this document, under Feedback, Growth, and Assessment, you will see the very last entry is, how do I use rubrics to determine grades? That is a hyperlink, so if you click on it, it will jump you to page 19. And here you can find a description of a bunch of different strategies that you can use to convert um, rubric scores to grades. Everyone's grading situation is different, so it works for me, may not work well for you. I trust that you will use whatever strategy best meets your needs. Personally, I really like example D. So each task is entered as its own grade in the grade book and students are graded based off of their proficiency level. 
Of course, I need to make a retake or a makeup plan for my students. Again, this varies based on your school's policies. So for me, I just made sure that I had a plan for each of the tasks and I noted if I needed to come up with any additional prompts for any retakes that might occur. And then lastly, let's talk about those formative assessments. So everything that we have seen so far in this planner directly relates to the summative IPA assessment, which is really just one part of the determined assessment evidence phase of backward design. Formative assessments are just as important as summative because they provide a checkpoint along the way for students to receive feedback on their progress. So it's important to take note of where those formative assessments are and what they are. So for my formative assessments, I'm back in my flex text. And if we look at the sidebar menu, we can see all the different textbook sections. In Entre Culturas, these formative assessments are called En Camino. In Entre Culture, these are called Javants. And in Triangulo Apreciado, these are K Aprendiste sections. Now, all of these assessments are performance-based. And since they're formative assessments, students don't necessarily have to do all of the tasks within the assessment itself. You can have students complete as many or as few tasks as you feel are necessary to provide them appropriate feedback. For the purposes of my planner, I'm just going to note what the name of this section is and what its page number is. So I'm just going to enter En Camino and its page number. There we go. And with that, we have successfully completed the IPA planner together. Integrated performance assessments are great assessment tools because they really do allow students to demonstrate what they know in tasks that mimic real world situations. And because they allow you to align your curriculum to your unit goals and essential questions through the backward design model. For those of you that are interested in it, I will put my completed um, planning document that you see here into the shared folder once we log off today. All right, thank you so much, Kelsey, for all of that great information and for your demonstration of using our IPA planning tool to prepare and streamline that process of using IPAs. We will take questions in just a moment, but uh, I have two quick things that I'd like to bring to your attention. First of all, we are always looking for feedback on this PD that we are creating for you. So please take a moment and fill out the brief survey about tonight's session. You can use the link or the QR code on the screen. Kate will also put the link in the chat. Anything that you have to share with us um, is very helpful in guiding us so that we cre can create more useful professional development for you in the future. And then lastly, uh, we just wanna do, uh, have another quick reminder here that we still have one more session to go in this series, in this IPA series. Next week, we are going to have guest teachers that join us to talk about how they use IPAs in their classroom and share some tips and tricks. Participants will also have a chance to chat as well. So please register on our professional development page on the Wayside website. And Kate will also put that link in the chat for us again as well. And these are our email addresses. Please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we are more than happy to address any questions that you have or um, about the IPA process or about our products in general. And thank you so much for joining us. We just, we really appreciate that you taking some of your time this evening to spend it with us and learn more about IPAs. So we have uh, a couple minutes for questions. So if there's anything that you'd like to ask about IPAs, about the planning template, um, or anything else that has to do with IPAs in Entre Culturas or Entre Couture, please put them in the chat and Kate can help us out with some of those questions. All right, so I there's been some great conversations in the chat, uh, talking a little bit about the instructions being in the target language uh, for various levels. So I addressed some of those things. In, in, in uh, Wayside Publishing's uh, products, we have the instructions for the assessment in English in levels one and two, and then in three and four, they're in Spanish or French, they are in level three, and in English in levels one and two. So I want to address that to everybody as well. Um, and for the most part, I feel as though 
that Kelsey addressed many of the topics that came up. Does anybody else have any questions? I do. Yeah, by all means. Um, maybe it's a little like too specific, but I was actually, I've done IPAs before in uh, different levels and most all of them I've designed myself. This is the first time I've used a wayside one for the AP level. And um, I literally just did it today. And I noticed as I was doing it, or as I was preparing it, that the rubrics, because I said you have rubrics for everything, <laughs> but the rubric to grade the interpersonal speaking was super like, not, I don't know, it wasn't realistic <laughs> about like how to actually do it. Like, how am I gonna grade like 15 pairs of students talking to each other at once? And then it said like they had a graphic organizer, but then you're grading their writing skills and not their interpersonal speaking skills. And I don't know. So I'm just, I'm just not seeing the connection between yeah, interpersonal as part of the IPA and like how that's graded on your rubrics or if there, if you have any tools or suggestions for, I'm just seeing this right now in the assessment guidelines, like your talking points, but maybe you could speak to that or somehow like how you suggest doing interpersonal assessments for an IPA when everybody's doing it simultaneously. So just to jump in right away, and then I'll, I'll leave it to Alexi and Kelsey, but next week, we're actually going to have three teachers who are using our IPAs come on and discuss in all three modes, what sort of techniques and strategies they use for that exact question. So um, we're going to have three teachers that are going to basically give tips and suggestions on how to grade that and how to use the rubrics and such. Lexi, Kelsey? I will say that in my experience, I preferred, because trying to grade 15 pairs of students at once is extremely difficult. It is near impossible to do. So I used to take days where I would have it be like the recording and I would have them record their interpersonals in class during day two of the assessment. And then I would listen to their recordings at a later date to grade them. Yeah, okay, that makes, it seems like a nightmare, but it makes more sense. <laughs> There's a, there's a couple of people chiming in in the chat as well with ideas. So we appreciate that. Thank you. I'll say one quick thing I did. I had students rotate around and talk to different pairs and I would go around and listen to like two pairs at a time. So they wouldn't just have the conversation once they'd have it multiple times. And then I only had to listen to like two or four at a time and not all 15 pairs. Cause that is a lot. I definitely agree with that. All right. Well, we have hit well, 5.30 on the West Coast, 8.30 for you East Coasters. So we want to be respectful of your time. Please remember our email addresses are on there. So if you need to reach out to us anytime, have any more questions, please feel free to do so. And uh, remember that we do have another session next week and we really hope to see you all there. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great evening. Take care. Thanks, everyone.